Are you looking for a Z170 board, especially in the mid-tier price range category? Well, this could be it. Stick around for the full review of Gigabyte's Gaming 5. <laughs> Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. So this is actually a pretty interesting board. Let's take a look at all the, the bits first and then we'll talk about what makes it interesting. So into the box you get the kind of usual stuff which is the driver disc, the manual, case badge, SATA connector, uh, SATA cables, uh, IO shield, SLI uh, sort of bridge. And uh, you actually get a World of Warships um, invite code as well. Taking a look at the board itself, it does look pretty good with the uh, chipset heatsink with a uh, very nice sort of, actually has a kind of glossy finish, same with the VRM heatsinks. In fact, the only problem with these is that they're actually kind of spring-loaded pushpins like the Intel stock heatsink, which I really don't like that much. Taking a look down the bottom, you see the Turbo B clock, which is great for overclocking, as well as the two 32 gigabit per second M.2 ports, and the X16, X8, and X4 reinforced PCI slots, which is quite nice as well. Taking a look at the top, you'll see the OC and Eco buttons, as well as the uh, debug LED, so the 7 seg screens, which are quite nice, great for, uh, you know, troubleshooting your issues. You also get 3.1, uh, sorry, two 3.0 USB 3 headers, front panel headers, and you get two, uh, three SATA Express ports, which can double as six SATA ports. You also get a very nice audio section with the amp up audio, split PCB, changeable op amps, and changeable gain as well, so if you're using something like high impeded headphones, you can switch the gain up for that one, which is very nice. Taking a look at the rear I.O. you can see as I said full 7.1 audio with SPDIF. You actually get two gigabit ethernet ports which is really nice for me personally. You also get USB 3, USB 2, display port, HDMI, USB 3.1 and type C, uh, more USB 2 ports with DAC up audio for you know clean voltage and a PS2 combo port. Taking a look at this in a system, as you can see with that red LED on the split PCB section for the audio, it looks so good. I always love when these boards have these LEDs because it just sort of shines down on the case and looks really cool and just really stands out for me. Um, just a bit of usability, um, it does actually, you know, the, the reinforced PCI slots according to Gigabyte, in fact Gigabyte's product designer Hunter, when we spoke to him and did an interview with him, he said that there's a lot of boards that snap off um, with PCI slots with big heavy graphics cards, kind of like the one that's in there now, so um, it's nice that that's there, but um, yeah, let's talk a little bit more about, about specific usability, including the BIOS. This one really isn't that great for me. It's quite bland, it's quite grey everywhere, and it was while it does include all the features you'd expect, it doesn't seem to be laid out as kind of efficiently um, as other BIOSes are. In fact, other Gigabyte BIOSes are. They seem to have kind of gone back a step with this one, I think. And uh, yeah, well, it still does function and still does have everything there. Personally, it really isn't my favourite. Um, it's quite sort of, it's not as intuitive to use, and I personally wouldn't recommend anyone who doesn't know what they're doing to kind of venture in here. So this board actually kind of lines up with the ASUS Ranger that we checked out when Z170 first launched. It's actually a quite an interesting comparison. So first off, this one has dual gigabit Ethernet, which is actually really nice because as a video editor with using a NAS, I use um, my Ethernet port a lot. And uh, to have dual gigabit Ethernet would be fantastic. So it's something nice to see. It's not necessarily a gaming feature, um, so bear that in mind, but it is still quite nice. Um, on the, the main difference for me between the boards is when you actually have it in your hands, the ASUS board feels a lot more premium, especially considering that the Gigabyte board's um, chip, uh, chipset heatsinks, or the, sorry, the VRM heatsinks, are all are, are kind of push pin, they're spring loaded push pins, that's how they're connected, which really makes this board feel a lot less premium than it should be, even though it's in the same sort of price category. Uh, whereas the ASUS one had screws in the back plate, so. Now, it's something to bear in mind, but nonetheless, they are very, very similar in features and in general, just awesomeness and um, they are definitely great boards and, and this one specifically has things like the uh, you know the reinforced PCI brackets uh, or the PCI slot so if you do put a big heavy graphics card in your PCI slot doesn't snap off um, you know you have all the sort of standard features as I said including type C and 3.1 so that's all nice um, but the kind of the, the thing about uh, this sort of mid-tier board is there's nothing wrong with it um, besides those pushpin uh, heat sinks, but there isn't anything that really excels about it besides that gigabit ethernet. It's quite hard to, you know, kind of innovate with this area, although they do have a really nice sound um, sort of section, including the split PCB with the red LEDs, which looks really cool, um, and also the changeable op amps as well as the audio uh, gain switches, so um, that is also pretty nice as well. So if you want a nice sound experience while gaming or video editing, this board is definitely something you should probably check out. Now, if you are looking for this board, um, this is probably going to be a 4 for 5 money. It is definitely up there, but as I said, there isn't really anything too special 
um, about it uh, at the price category. So, you know, just bear that in mind that you're not going to get the best board on the market. It's certainly not the best looking as far as I've seen. Personally, I think that goes to the Hero, the Asus Hero. Um, but yeah, that's why it's also going to get say, a 4 for style. It's actually going to get a 4 for everything besides performance because uh, performance is kind of even across boards and has been for maybe 4 or 5 years now. Um, but it is going to get a 4 functionality, personally because I like everything that's on it, but the BIOS um, isn't as sort of user friendly, Does kind of it's a bit uh, more difficult to use in general. Although you can still overclock and all that sort of stuff if you did want to. Um, in terms of, you know, um, style assistance it's going to be a 4 and Titan UV score is going to uh, be a 4 as well. It's actually going to get the Worth Money Award because if you are, you know, you don't really want to look at the BIOS, you just want to have a nice looking board that you can put in a system, you can put in a nice graphics card and game your heart away or even do some video editing, uh, all that sort of stuff, you know, uh, productivity as well as gaming. This is definitely a good board for you. It will last you for a good while with USB Type-C as well as DDR4 and obviously the, the uh, Z170 chipset. So that's all good and it's uh, yeah just a really nice board if you're looking for this price category. So that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and don't forget to hit the like button uh, as well as uh, or, or the dislike button if you didn't like it. But if you did or didn't, let us know what you did or didn't like in the comments down below. If you want to buy this board, um, check it out. Uh, they may or may not have a link on Yoyo Tech. If not, if you want to buy any more uh, tech and you're in the UK, check out Yoyo Tech and the links uh, either down below or over there. Um, and if you're anywhere else in the world, there are links down below for you too. Check out some of our other videos. Check out our Facebook, Twitter. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, as it uh, you know helps out and you get some cool videos in your subscription feed. Maybe because YouTube doesn't work, but hey, we'll forget about that. Also, check out some of our merchandise if you want to buy a cool Tech Team UB, uh, shirt, T-shirt, uh, bed cover, um, laptop, phone case, whatever. It doesn't have to be Tech Team UB. We do actually have a couple of other ones as well, including a uh, an inside joke and just a generally funny one. So check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.